art was something that you were interested in? Oh, wow. Um, for me, I wasn't sure what it really was, but it was when I was younger. I was relaxing in front of the TV. I was watching this cartoon show called Pop Up Girls. And as I grew up, I still watched the show, and I was like, oh, this animation is cool. But as I started to understand that these were people's drawings, these were people's imagination, their characters, and they took the time to make them become real and had all these people fall in love with their creativity and their drawing. And I'm like, wow, that's really cool. I want to make my characters or imaginary friends real. So I started drawing all these cool little, little crayon <laughs> color pictures and it just led just led to that really bad. You know? And now I'm here because of it. Very good. Um, for me, art was always something I had a part of my life. It wasn't, I don't remember a time not having art, whether it be poetry, um, painting, or collage, or um, singing. Every form of art was a part of my life. My parents were artists, and I grew up with artists like Laura Cook and Luke Taylor, and uh, uh, where is he? Kylie Malik from Mahogany Poetry. Um, <laughs> So that's, it's always been something that's part of my life, and it, it always understood me when I didn't feel like anything else understood me. You know, it's very For this particular exhibition, they were given a challenge that they had to paint or create to this thing, the chicken circle. So the question I'm going to pose to the panel is, what did you learn trying to get ready for this exhibition? I learned a lot, actually. I learned so much, and I was so excited. Um, about the chitlin circuit, and I realized it was really its own economy and its own um, culture and lifestyle, uh, and it reached beyond just the music that people know. Um, but it was also businesses, chains of businesses, uh, and it was really. I really feel like it was one of our golden eras as a culture. Um, so that's what I learned at getting ready for this expedition was the stories of the people who were on the chicken circuit. When I started researching Pig Lake Bates, he was a really, really happy man. And for him to become the way he was before he passed was, he always worked really hard, even when he lost his leg when he was 12 years old, but he still did not stop dancing. And there was so many people that had to sacrifice. And even though they had to go into small areas and like juke joints that had to be cramped in loud areas, even though there were people that couldn't hear the music, but they still tried until a point to where they got to where they were going to go. I think I learned, uh, I learned that where a lot of the music I listen to now came from and who worked those artists. Um, like, coming from the Apollo Theater, a lot of people, uh, that was where they started. That's, you know. Um, and just going off of what you said, um, I just learned that, you know, the black community at that point really supported each other. Um, and there was this point in time, and it's very possible that people can, can support each other and keep each other going and, and uh, provide opportunities for other people. Now, Aaliyah brings up an interesting point. The Chitlin Circuit in its historical definition is one thing. But there are two moments in African-American history that are crucial 
to the well-being of who we are as a people, the Harlem Renaissance and the children. We hear a lot of stories being told about the Harlem Renaissance, but we don't really hear that much of the history of the Chippewa Circuit. The Chippewa Circuit is not non-existent today. I want to I clear that up. It still exists. One of our most wealthiest and celebrated entertainers of today's era. Who here has ever heard of a dude named Tyler Perry? Okay. Tyler Perry actually became wealthy on a modern Chitlin circuit. He put a brand of black theater together, faith-based, took it out city to city, and booked and promoted his own plays. He was a millionaire, a multi-millionaire, well before he first appeared on the cover of Ebony, Essence, and Jet, which gave him leverage when Hollywood came to call. So he was able to write his own ticket when Hollywood came to call, and he was the first black promoter of a sitcom that got a syndication deal before the first episode was ever aired. And his whole legacy started because of the support of the black community taking community theaters from city to city and being supported by his own people. That is the Chitlin Circuit. Okay, so now, <laughs> back to you ladies. Once you went through the process of creating the work, everybody in attendance, all we see is the beauty that you guys are able to produce. We don't really know the journey and how it gets there. Beyond what you learned from the Chitlin Circuit, how challenging was it for you to create the pieces that you created? Well, for me, it was very challenging emotionally and uh, definitely because it was just so much I wanted to put on these paintings, but I had so, I only had a minimum selection and it was, it was different because I had never used collage before as well. So that was a struggle. Um, but once you get the hang of it, you get the hang of it, and it turns out beautifully. <laughs> the Wilson's laughing because he like, really knows I was called a crying and I was so upset. Um, but. Yeah, well, let me say something. Because this young lady would call me. I'll be like, what? Uh, I'll do. <laughs> but let me tell you the beauty of creativity and how creativity can explode off the page. Their challenge was to just give me five paintings. That was the requirement for the exhibition. I wanted five pieces that we could look at, we could critique, we could try to develop to put into this show. Not only did this young lady give me five works, she took it upon herself with the amount of information that she took in she actually ended up totaling all of these additional pieces that you see hanging on the walls and behind the young ladies on the panel discussion. That's the beauty of creativity. Once you turn on the faucet of creativity in a young person, it's very hard to turn it off. And that's the evidence right there. Okay, so. Um, Yes, it's basically all that you said, and I because <laughs> um, you really got to hear me argue with myself. But um, I had to pick. I think my my biggest challenge was Otis. In uh, for you guys who don't know, it's uh, the I invented swag. But the interesting thing about Otis was because. Again, an argument Milton and I had. Um, you know, it seems Milton gets into a lot of arguments, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but he was saying that young people, you know, this might be a challenge for us because a lot of young people don't know a lot about the children's circuit, but I wanted to take the time out to show people that, like Aaliyah was saying sooner, uh, earlier, that a lot of our music stems from that. Um, and that's what I wanted to try to show people and um, kind of curve people to see that we, even today, how much the Chitlin Circuit affects us, um, especially here in Sacramento, because the more I learned about it, the more I saw I saw a Chitlin Circuit here in, in Sacramento, like with Mahogany Urban Poetry Series. Uh, 
JT's uh, Poor Needed uh, says, the, um, you know, in the black businesses around here, it was in how we all support each other and we all take the time out to, to make sure that we, we help to guide each other and be there to support each other with whatever we can. Uh, I think the hardest part for me, <clears throat> there was a couple hard parts. Um, the fact that it was a theme, usually when I paint, I just do whatever I want. So just being constricted to a certain theme was kind of hard at times for me. Um, and also, just because I didn't do like the collage and didn't get to put words online, or I just didn't want to put words. Um, it was harder to, to express like what I, you know, to get the whole message out there. Um, so I, like, I wanted to make sure you see like the expressions in their faces and kind of get like a feel for, for the time and for the person. Um, so it's kind of hard when you don't have words to, to go with that. Um, so yeah, that was probably the biggest challenge. The um, difficult part for me about doing these paintings was I was out of my element. This is actually my first time actually painting on canvas with acrylic paints. Like, at first I wanted to do wall of color, but Mr. Wilson's like, no, it's not going to stay. <laughs> so most of the time, as I was painting, I was finding out more about how acrylic moved or how my brushes didn't want to paint straight. Because I'm so nitpicky. Oh my gosh. But as, well, as more as I painted and came back and asked for help or how I should do things, the more I got into the groove of painting to where I was comfortable enough to actually paint without really worrying, even though through the process I was stressing like crazy, staying up late on school nights. It was, it was an interesting experience for me, but I'm glad that I had it under my belt. I want to go back to you, uh, Aaliyah, just for a brief second. Okay. Um, and I want to say thank you to Barbara Rains, the curator and uh, director here at the Brickhouse. Give her a hand. <laughs> There is not I just to get too many commercial galleries that will take a risk on displaying young, up-and-coming talent. Galleries are businesses like anything else. They got bills to pay. So typically how it works, if, if this not an artist that they think they're going to be able to generate sales from, they won't take that chance. Barbara is one of the fearless curators in Sacramento and really should be celebrated on the opportunity she provides young people. So give her another round. Me and Barbara were talking about Aaliyah's pains. And I was extremely impressed. Uh, I met Aaliyah and her mother at a, at a community event at Sac State um, where I was a keynote speaker of talking to young people the importance about pursuing higher education. And from the first time I saw her work, I was pretty much moved. You have something in your work that me and Barbara was discussing the other night, and, I want, and, and you just tapped in on it. But I want to make sure everybody kind of understands a unique gift you have your, with your abilities at such a young age. One of the things that is hardest to teach when you're teaching painting is how to capture mood. I don't know this girl age. Honestly, she's like 19, 20 something. But without knowing her age, looking at those paintings, I can feel the mood of the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. That is a unique gift that can't really be taught of how to capture a period's mood. You also see it in film, you also see it in song, you also see it in dance. It is a unique talent that can't be taught that once it's discovered, you have no choice but to try to help celebrate it. Last question I'm gonna to pose to the panel. With the experience that you guys have went through doing this exhibition, with the skills that you guys are developing, where do you see yourselves in the next five years as far as? <laughs> well, to be honest, the next five years as an artist, I will still be in school, I'll still be taking art classes and training. Give that up, she said she's still gonna be in school. That's <laughs> 
Because I want to strengthen my um, skills all the way around, not just in painting and drawing, but in new media, and digital, and ceramics. I want to go for all of, all of it to see what I can do and where I can go with it. And after that, I'll hopefully be going to a four-year and keep going, basically. Very good. Um, in five years, I'm going to be graduating from Washington State University with a degree in Art and I plan on studying in museum studies because I want to open up my own gallery and hopefully expand it to, to a museum um, level because I feel like we as a people don't have much of a, of a display of our own gifts and talents. And so I would really like to, to help with that and to give give young people something back like Milton has done because he's been really huge inspiration and definitely somebody who has encouraged me for years and he's pushed me every single time um, <laughs> regardless if he was willing or unwilling if he like pulling teeth but it's it's definitely an experience I appreciate and I love you I'm sorry I'm getting emotional yeah <laughs> Well, in five years, too, you're going to hear probably one of the most phenomenal CDs released. I didn't even know this girl could sing. She sung for me the other day for the first time. Hold another level. Y'all going to see it in a minute. <laughs> Again, you have me following you. <laughs> um, in five years, I want to uh, definitely have a lot more, more shows. Um, I really want to show a lot of young people art and make that, oops, sorry, um, just make it big with the, with the young community. Um, I really, my real goal is to, I want to be like a, like an art superstar. Like a, how, how back in the day, like even like, like the Harlem Renaissance and everything, they were like, it was like our rap stars and our singers. I want to be like that. So, you know what I mean? I got you. Um, <laughs> um, that might may not happen in five years, but I want to at least be working towards that, for sure. Five years, I got you. We're going to be here. <laughs> okay. Don't worry about the show part. We'll take care of it. Y'all give it up for the new pod generation. <laughs> I actually want to call, before I call Angela up, who's going to take over the... Uh, hosting duties because we're going to get into our entertainment portion of the program so you guys can actually see up close and personal the amazing talent we have here in Sacramento to offer. I want to thank these young ladies once again because I'm not the easiest person to get along with. I take art very seriously as you guys might have found out by now. But no, I believe that art plays a role in educating as well as decorating. So I stress the information portion of art. But I also want to say this, before we are so quick to criticize the attitudes and the behavior of our young peoples, sometimes we need to look and reflect on who we are as people in the community assisting and raising them. You know, my mama used to always tell me, when you point a finger at somebody, you got three pointing back at yourself. Give it up for the new power generation. Yeah. 